AZ Rants is a segment where I take a less structured and humorous approach to look at any topic that crosses my mind relating to the subject of anime and manga. It contains my raw, biased opinion and is for the purpose of creating debate and or discussion so it shouldn't be taken too seriously. Got that? Great. Now shut up and listen. So, a recent topic that's been red hot in the anime community recently is the topic of anime on television, and it's certainly a topic that I've thought about a lot personally. What sparked this discussion was of course Adult Swim's brief revival of the Toonami TV block a few weeks ago on April Fool's Day. Now, for any of you who have no idea what Toonami is, or what the recent revival was all about, well, here's a brief rundown. For any of my younger viewers who have no memory of this, Toonami was an action-oriented programming block on the channel Cartoon Network that ran for over 11 years before being cancelled on the 20th of September 2008. The block ran some American cartoons, but more notably it was a TV home to a number of different anime, many of which are now considered as cult classics in the Western anime community, Dragon Ball Z, Yu Yu Hakusho, Gundam Wing, Outlaw Star, Tenchi Muyo and a fair few others. Fast forward to just a few weeks ago and on April 1st 2012, Adult Swim decided to bring back the Toonami block for just one night only as an April Fool's joke, re-airing many of the aforementioned shows along with new promos and bumpers to go along with them. Naturally, this drove the American anime fandom into a collective nostalgia driven orgasm, instantly sparking a movement to try and bring back the Toonami block permanently, spearheaded by anime voice acting legend himself, Steve Bloom. Now, the reason the Toonami block sparked such a big reaction from the fanbase was because of the huge effect it had on the western anime industry during its prime. The boom of anime in the west during the early 2000s had a big deal to do with the anime that was running on television at the time, coming mostly from the Pokemon craze, the Adult Swim block and of course the Toonami block. There's also this little thing called the internet as well that played a big part, but that's a topic for a different video entirely. See, while the internet may have been responsible for getting many fans into anime, it was most definitely television that was responsible for the mass exposure of anime. And for a lot of people, Toonami was their first introduction into that wild world, which until April the 1st had long since died. So what Adult Swim did for us during the revival was basically setting our nostalgia drives to over 9000 and for one night only, giving us our after school childhood back for just a brief period, allowing us to relive the memories when we were just a naive kid gawping at some strange looking spiky haired men with muscles that could strangle a baby elephant to death, battling in some grand fighting tournament or in some seizure inducing gigantic robot cause the space colonies must be saved. Of course the fanbase are going to flip out over it, we're slaves to nostalgia. I mean all I have to do to send half of you into a nostalgia driven frenzy is do this. Oh yeah baby that's right it's Dragon Ball Z. Though, while I'm all for this movement and bringing more anime to television, it did lead me to ask myself a very simple question which doesn't just apply to Toonami, but to television as a medium in general. Nostalgia aside, is there still a point of anime being on television? Make no mistake, back when the Toonami and Adult Swim block were in their prime, it had a huge effect for anime in the West and no one is doubting their significance in the industry. But let's be honest here, what this movement is really about is trying to get back a part of our childhood that we long thought was dead. And there's nothing wrong with that. But as it stands now for the current generation of anime watchers relying primarily on the internet, TV has become a redundant medium for us. There's no longer any need for us to rely on a fixed schedule or having to wait for the latest episodes. We pick what we watch, when we want to watch it. Why would I need to worry about rushing back home after school to catch the latest episode of Dragon Ball Z when all the episodes are already available at my fingertips or through Funimation's millionth re-release of the damn thing? Why should I have to wait a week to find out what the latest developments in Gundam Wing are when I can just marathon the entire series at once on Crunchyroll? And even if they air more recent anime, they will still have to contend with these same problems. Back when Tsunami was in its prime, TV didn't have to worry about this sort of competition. There was no DVR, no instant fan subtitles, no debate on subs versus dubs. TV was the only source where this stuff was available and the internet was still a relatively new but growing phenomenon. In the present day it's the internet that is king and TV that's been left behind. Especially in a community that is obsessed with having the fastest and most up to date episodes from its original airtime in Japan. TV, it seems, just can't keep up. There's a reason why Toonami died in the first place, why Adult Swim is a shadow of his former self and why just recently Ryzen dropped Funimation channels from their services. There just wasn't enough interest. So for us already established anime watchers and for the people crying out for its revival, we don't really need it. And I have to wonder how successful our revival really would be once the novelty and nostalgia dies out and people see no need to be as faithful to a programming block as they once were when they were kids. 
So you may be assuming that a thing as Tsunami Revival or any anime on television has become a moot point, and to an extent, yes, I do think so. But there's still one, and always will be one, major reason for putting anime on TV. The creation of new fans. For me and for many others watching this video, we would have never gotten into anime if not for it being on television. Like many other fans born in the 90s, I first got exposed to anime through Pokemon. A wonderful fantasy world in which the Earth is ruled by stuck-up teenage twats, forcefully domesticating wild animals and then pitting them against each other in a fight to the death. Or at least until one of them fainted, whatever. It was awesome. And then Dragon Ball Z and the rest of the Tsunami shows came along and I was hooked. I needed more of these shows about big-eyed, powered-up fighters forever combating increasingly powerful opponents, which convinced me to go out and actively search for more shows like this, resulting in the start of my anime fandom. But that never would have happened if I never got exposed to it in the first place on TV. Without television, the only place new fans would come from is through word of mouth, whether it be in real life or through the internet. For the anime fandom and industry to continue growing, there always needs to be an attraction for new fans, because the fact is, in a few years when you finish college or find a job and real life hits you, you won't have as much time or commitment to be able to plough through the anime at the pace you do now. That's not a speculation, that's not pessimism, that's just life. This current generation of anime fans can't sustain the industry forever, and there will always be a need for a constant stream of new fans to keep the fandom afloat. So whether this can be achieved through word of mouth alone is something that I'm sceptical over. This brings me to another issue that needs to be addressed. What shows could actually be a hit if aired in the West? To have a chance at being successful, we can't just keep re-airing the same series that have been around for over a decade, and we need something fresh for the newer generation. But, as I mentioned in previous rants, with the decline of the number of anime garnered for a western audience and the slow death of dubbed anime, there's less and less choice of shows that could possibly have a successful run on TV. Naruto, Bleach and One Piece are slowly running its course. Shows that were seemingly targeted for American broadcasts such as Hero Man, Pantheon Stocking or Tiger and Bunny haven't even been dubbed, and I doubt Slice of Life or anything too dangerously Japanese would be great for drawing people into the medium. You can't show subtitled anime on mainstream TV because, as much as the community would like to frown upon the English language blemishing their favourite anime ready for mass broadcast, most people aren't patient enough to get into a new medium they have no idea about when it's in a foreign language, especially if they're kids. So that's where we stand now. Sure, more anime on TV would always have a positive effect on the industry, but whether the fandom actually needs it or whether it can still be successfully pulled off in this day and age remains to be seen and whether the anime fandom can continue growing through the power of the internet alone or slowly retreat back into the world of extreme obscurity over the years is something that we'll just have to wait and see. But I guess that's why I can ask you guys. Should more anime come back to TV? And if so, would it be successful enough? Leave a comment or video response for your chance to get featured in my next rant. That's it for me now though, so with your responses to my previous rant, what do you think about the state of the anime industry? In some sense, it still makes me wonder why we as fans are not alarmed by this. Surely we should be asking why some of the best anime isn't available to us. Surely we should care that the future favourite series we nev may never see in anime because we seem completely unwilling to spend a few pounds. It's been said many times, but I will repeat it. It is a huge